Praise God, praise God, and welcome to the city of David. Tonight is Bible study night. Anybody excited about learning about the word of God? That God might pour into our cups on tonight. Amen. Praying that you can get enough space right now that you might hear from God. God can do it. He can make a way. He can provide everything you need in this experience. If you believe it, I would go ahead right now and just give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. And so here at the city of David, we try to learn the word. That we might live the word. And then model the word to the world. Amen. Last week we started at the very beginning, and we're going to continue uh, that study on tonight. Genesis chapter 1, moving into chapter 2. I want to talk tonight about uh, suitability. I believe many of us have confused suitability with compatibility. And I think if you confuse suitability, with compatibility, you're going to mess yourself up. In this season of life, you need to understand that, well, let me not speak to you. Some things I'm suitable for is not compatible for me. I'm going to say that again for somebody here and you're listening. Some things that I am compatible for, I'm not suitable for. There's some people, I can, I, I can get along with everybody. But it wasn't meant for everybody to be my assignment. You get that? That makes sense, right? Some of y'all eat stuff. I, I could eat it, but I won't. Amen? It's not suitable for me. Some places y'all go, I could go, but I won't. It's not suitable for me. And don't judge my suitability and I won't judge yours. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, suitability versus compatibility. That's what we'll be talking about on tonight. I want to go deep tonight. Try to go deep tonight. And I believe I'm surrounded by the right people so I can launch out into the deep. Let's pray. God, we say thank you. Give you glory and honor and praise. God, we say thank you. For all that you've done for us, through us, in us. God, we say thank you. And now, God, we ask right now that you would hmm, pour into our cups. One more time, God. We know you are able to do exceeding and above. So for somebody tonight, that cup might run over. So we'll praise you in advance. We'll give you glory in advance. Honor you in advance. Exalt you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, go to Genesis 1. Genesis 1. I need you to understand that even the creation uh, thought that God had done great and mighty things. That's why Romans 1 and 20 says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power, in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The psalm was declared in Psalm 19, 1 through 4. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where the voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and the words to the end of the world. That means day after day after day, we see the beauty of God. And we see the divinity of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, praise God. Now, the problem uh, is some of us don't really believe all that we read in Scripture. We read it, but we don't really believe it. It shows in our actions. And it shows in our speech. Amen? Amen. But I want you to believe every word that's in this book of Genesis. Because if you can just get this, it'll make the rest of the Bible make sense. If you can really just get that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, it'll make the rest of the Bible make sense. If you struggle with that, 
it's going to cause you to struggle with everything else. You got to believe in the beginning that he created the heavens and the earth, period. That's right. That's right. That's right. Understand what I'm just saying. He created the heavens and the earth. Everything you see. How is it that the sun know when to come up and when to go down? How is it that the sun can rotate and shift and everybody in creation can see it? Amen? Amen. If it's on your side of the hemisphere, you can see it. But those of us that's on the other side, we see a different light. And we know without a shadow of a doubt, it's getting ready to rotate without any human intervention. How, how, how did that happen? It's because God had everything to do with it. And he did it good and he did it perfect one time. It did not require a remix. Amen? It did not require a remix. Some of y'all didn't get that. Because if he created you, that means you didn't require a remix either. That means no matter what season you go through, you were created for that season. No matter whatever situation you go through, how he created you that first time was good enough. Amen? Amen? So we get to the text. Watch this. We get to the text. One time, Albert Einstein, or he was in a classroom, and, and he asked all of the students, uh, did they believe that a God exists? And all of them came together, these brilliant scholars that were, that were in Einstein class in order to be taught by him. They gathered in a huddle, and they came back together, and before they answered, Einstein declared to them, how much of the world's wisdom and knowledge do you think your circle consists of? All the students that were present, he asked them, how much of the world's knowledge and wisdom do you think if y'all add it up would consist of? And they said about 5%. 5% of all the world's knowledge was in this little circle right here. Where Einstein said, well, maybe God exists in the other 95. <laughs> hmm? Maybe God exists in the other 95. So you got to believe that God exists. And in the very beginning, he created, amen, the heavens and the earth. Ephesians 1 and 4 says, now just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? Holy and without blame before him in love. Holiness is still righteous. Amen? And to believers, holiness should still be popular. Hmm? And holiness means to be set apart. It's your willingness to be set apart. Many of us struggle with holiness because we don't want to be set apart. Hmm? And when you decide to be holy, amen, or when you decide to strive to be holy, it's going to cause you to separate from certain people. That's it right there. And certain, separate from certain thoughts. Amen? Because everybody don't want to be holy. And everybody in the church don't want to be holy. That's why we got, no, oh, y'all ain't going to go there with me tonight. Amen? Amen? But holiness is still right. Huh? Now watch this. Now notice in the in the chapter one we read last week, some of y'all missed it. Probably, you know, you didn't think deep of it. But I was thinking on this all, uh, all last week. Understand this. When he was creating everything, and he said, darkness was prevailing in the land. How can darkness prevail in the land when God created it all? How can, all right, I come in your church and you tell me he created the heavens and the earth and you tell me right about verse 1 and verse 2 and verse 3 that darkness was prevalent and that's why he had to send the light. So if he created everything, are you telling me God created darkness? Hmm? Come on, talk back to me tonight. Are you, are you, are you telling me that he created darkness? Uh, turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah 14 and 12. I'm going to help somebody in this, new, in this new year, 2024. I'm going to help somebody. Isaiah 14 and 12. 
here's what the word of God says. Isaiah 14 and 12. How have you fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn? You have been what? Cast down to the earth. You who was once laid low the nations. Still, I still see some looks. Turn with me to Ezekiel 28 and 16. I'm trying to help somebody. Ezekiel 28 and 16. Through your widespread trade, trade you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the mountain of God and I expelled you, guardian Sherub, from among the fiery stones. Okay. I'm still looking at me confused. Understand this. When God created everything, everything was good. But when, but when a certain spirit decided to be disobedient, God kicked it out of heaven. And when God kicked it out of heaven, it came to earth. There are some people in your life, amen, and some situations in your life that you need to understand have, have the ability to transform. All right, all right. No, you got to get that. Oh, yeah. There are some people in your life and some situations in your life that has the ability to transform. Can I help you? Because some of y'all want to help you real good tonight. There's some people that can come, some situations that can come in your life that can start off good and then turn and be evil. There's some people in your life that can start off smiling and then turn off and stab you in the back. You got to understand the transformation of entities can happen even in your life. So what I'm saying is that yes, God created everything good, but after a while, good decided to be bad. And you need to understand that because there's some situations in your life that's going to decide to be bad. No, there's some people in your life that's going to decide to. There's some people in your life that's going to decide. He created everything good. Remember, y'all y'all shouted that so he created me good. I was good. He looked at me and he blew uh, wind in my nostril and he looked at it and he said, it's good. Y'all, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. But some people, everybody ain't going to decide to stay good. You gotta get this. Because if you don't get this, it's gonna mess you up. You're gonna be asking me for a special counseling session because somebody you never thought would do you like that did you like that. <laughs> Amen? And I, I don't know if I got that kind of time in this season. I kept it. <laughs> so I'm gonna get you right now. Some people can come, some situation, it's, it, can be, it can be good from afar, and you get up on it, and it's far from good. Hmm? Oh, yeah. It was good in heaven and decided to become evil and God kicked it out. And if you were made in the image of God, why 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 are you so slow of kicking out evil in your life? Why are you try to hang out with evil and, and dwell with evil evil and embrace evil and, and watch it think you can change evil? It shows you every sign. It shows you every sign of being evil. Some stuff you know ain't for you, and you still keep entertaining it. It was good, y'all, and God said I had to kick it out. Why are you so slow in kicking something out? Now, I need you to understand. Watch this. Turn your Bibles with me to Exodus 10 and 21. Turn your Bibles with me. I'm going to help somebody tonight. Somebody will say, Pastor, you help me. Exodus 10 and 21. Exodus 10 and 21, it teaches us a fundamental principle you got to pick up on tonight. Amen. And, I, and I'm going to use an SAT word to show y'all I'm a little smart. Tangibility. Tangibility. Exodus 10 and 21, it teaches us about the tangibility of darkness. Watch what it says. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the sky. So that darkness spreads over Egypt. Darkness that what? Can be felt. Mm -hmm. There's some darkness you can't feel. Mm -hmm. That's your shot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what does 
depression look like? What does grief look like? What does stress look like? What does jealousy look like? What does, what does envious look like? It, 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 it's, that's why it says that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but principalities. That, I mean, it's some stuff that you can't see. It's some darkness that you can't see. Oh, I can, I can preach on that right now. That's, that ought to be somebody shout right now. Because there's some darkness surrounding you right now, but God has blocked it. There's some darkness right now in your house, on your job, that God has blocked. There's some stuff seen and unseen. Amen. That's why you ought to be able to give God the glory and the honor when you think of the darkness that you could not feel. That's why he said, God, stretch your hands so they can feel darkness. So that they can know. But, but darkness is already there. There's some stuff that's lingering that's already there, but God blocked it in your life. That's enough for you to give God the shout on tonight. There's some stuff that's lingering, but because grace is on your life, that's enough for you to praise God right there. That's enough for you to run around right there. That's enough. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the tangibility. That's how, it's the t it means something tangible. You know, something, something you can touch, something you can taste. Something you can actually hear. Something, but then there's some other stuff you can't touch, taste, and hear. Love. What? what? The tangibility of darkness was prevalent. And he said, I got to send light. I got to send light. Right? And then, and then, and then notice, notice, notice. Uh, We're we going to go there. we just in Genesis 1. We're going we to notice, right? right? Now, notice when he created at the end, because this is all the stuff I was thinking about. When he created man at the end, notice it, he gave man an assignment. The first thing he did was he created man, and then the Bible says he blessed it. Right? He blessed it. Anybody that come in your life that's, that's trying to see you like God sees you, they going to love you for who you are and not for what you can do. I'm coming to help somebody. Anybody that say they love you and they see you like God sees you, they gonna try to love you for who you are and not just for what you can do. Because notice when he created it, he kissed it and called it blessed even before they did anything. Hmm? He said, he said, he said, he said, he created man and he called it what? Blessed. All right. Alright, okay, he called it blessed. Okay. Now, now go back and read that. Go back and read that. Uh, verse 26. 26. 26. He said, Let us make mankind in our image and our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish and the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Okay? Now, some Bible scholars suggest that at some point in this uh, chapter 1, uh, it shifts and it begins to speak not just from God's perspective, but it speaks also from Adam's perspective. Okay, there's a shift in him. Now notice he said he created God and mankind in God's image. Now watch this, verse 28. And God, what? He blessed them and said to them, that means he blessed it and then he gave it an assignment. He says, be fruitful. And increase in numbers, fill the earth, and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea, and the birds in the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the ground. He created it, then he put man in it, and then told man, you're blessed, now go do. Right? God's going to create your environments. 
He's already given you what it takes for you to go there and be blessed in it. Amen? Amen. He has already... Now notice, it says be fruitful and multiply. He gave him a job. He gave man a job, right? That we should be fruitful and multiply. Multiply requires duplication. Right? And notice... It took God one day to create man. We were created in God's image, but we are not God. And we don't have the power of God. And so whereas it took God one day to create, it takes us 36 weeks in most cases. All right? Now with me? Now understand this. In all that he blessed man with, okay, let uh, Okay. In, in that all that he blessed man with, he gave man a desire for intimacy. Okay. He gave man a desire for sex. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Right? That's, 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 that's the mechanism that God has sent for multiplication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that, that desire is ordained by God, amen, for covenant relationships. Hmm? Hmm? Be, be fruitful and multiply. It, it, it's, it's not an activity uh, just for exercise. It, it, it's not an activity uh, just for recreation. Because the entities are becoming one. Yes. Not just in the creation, but in the act of creation. Alright? Right. Yeah. Now notice, God trusts us so much as humans that uh, he gave us the, that uh, desire. And it's there. It's there. You better understand it's there. You're going to mess yourself up if you try to, well, I'm, no, no, it's there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But he, he blessed us and gave us power over all things. He's given us power even over that desire. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's what makes us different than the animals. Because the animals have what? A heat seed. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't have no heat seed. I mean, you eat it all day long. Like, ah. mm -hmm. Hmm? Oh, yeah. To be fruitful and to multiply is for the covenant relationship. Yes. Amen? And it's because it's for the covenant relationship uh, when you are exercising in that activity, what well, ultimately what you're doing is that you're tying your soul with that of the other individual. You, you, you are tying your, because if you're in that act, if it's not you're tying your soul with another individual, then how can you reproduce? Right. Understand that we are we are souls. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know you look good. You got curves and muscles and all that, but you're a soul. Right. I can teach you. To, I can take you to scripture, and I can show you where in scripture it declares that you're a soul. Mm -hmm. Right? He was created in the image, and you are a soul. But I'm here to tell you that uh, in Watch this. Okay, watch this. For the word of God, Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit. Joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes, what? Of the heart. First Thessalonians 5 and 23. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through may your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ so when fruitful and multiply amen it's, it's, it's in that desire but that desire is ordained amen for a covenant relationship okay all right you, you, I have a lost anybody. Mm -hmm. Understand this. Notice that when you get to chapter 2, 
He begins to talk about now that he has created something, what's the next step? Where do we go from here? Right? And so when you get to chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in their vast, what? Array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, what? He rested from it all. Amen. Then what? God blessed the seventh day and he what? He sanctified it or he what? Made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the works of creation that he had done. Okay. All right. Now notice, uh, because of Jesus, uh, the Sabbath is not just a day. And the Sabbath is not just Sunday. Okay? Gotta know this, right? Because notice, when he did all of his other creation, go back to chapter 1. When he's creating, at the end of the creation, what does he say? And there was evening and there was morning. Trying to separate on this day, this is what I did. He did not say that on the Sabbath. No, that went over somebody's head. So if he didn't say that on the Sabbath, that means your Sabbath ought not be just one day. You ought to find opportunity every chance you get to rest. You ought not just be running around here with your head chopped off trying to please all these church folk. You ought to be able to get away every now and then and just rest. No, it's not a cuss word in the body. Y'all ain't talking. Watch this. He, he, he said in Colossians 2, 16 and 17, uh, Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are shadows of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found what? In Christ. When Jesus came, he took away Sabbath being just one day. Galatians 4, 9 and 11. But now that you know God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you are turning your back to those weak and miserable forces? Do you wish to be enslaved by them all over again? You are observing special days and months and seasons and years. I fear for you that somehow I have wasted my efforts on you. That means when Jesus came, he, he came that you might find rest in him. Amen? That's why Hebrews 4, 9, and 11 said, Therefore, then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from what? Their works. You can rest from your works. It's the Sabbath. You can rest from your works. It, you can rest from, and it says, just as God did, what? From his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following the example of disobedience. That means every day is a good day for a Sabbath. I'm talking to some folk now right now because I know that job got you thinking that that's your source. God is your source. And if you just remain obedient to God, he'll provide all of your needs. Because watch this, I don't care what job it is, I don't care what career it is, even before you had that career, didn't God meet your needs? Because if God didn't meet your needs, you never would have walked into that job. He had to meet your needs in order for you to be alive to walk in that job. So why don't you just praise and worship that God and be obedient to what he has called you to be? Because you can find, anybody know you found rest in God? Amen. Anybody know? And that's why you ain't got to run to know. You don't have to have no retail therapy. You don't even have to. You can just find rest in God. Amen. And in God alone. Amen. Uh, uh, there's a difference between a, a career and a calling. It's through your career uh, you make a living. It's through your calling you make a life. Amen? Amen. Your career may complement your calling, but your career do not contain your calling. Your calling is bigger than your career. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
I don't care what you do in life. Your calling is bigger than that. Amen. Amen. Your career is just one aspect of who you are. And that's why you all not get tied to your career and you all not find your value and your worth in your career. Because even when those people don't see you as you ought to be, guess what? God sees you as you ought to be. Amen. When those people don't want to commend you and tell you you're doing a great job, you ought to look toward the hills realizing that everything you need, thy hand shall provide. Can I talk to some folk tonight that can just pause right now and give God the glory? Because even when you went into that place broken, God sent you joy in the midst of it. Even when you went to that place feeling like hell, God sent heaven on that job. Can somebody tonight open up your mouth and give God the glory? He found rest. He found rest. He found rest. Now watch this. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to verse 2. It says, Now by the seventh day, God had finished the work that he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Amen? Amen. Then God blessed the seventh day and what? He made it holy. Because on it, he rested from all the work of creation that he had done. He rested. Amen. He rested, but he never rests. Our God is day and night. Yes. Our, our ideal of resting is different than God's. Yes. We're human. We're flesh. So we get tired. God can go on and on. That's why when somebody else sleep, God's still up. And when somebody up, God's still up. Amen? Because he never sleep nor do he slumber. That's why he's always on the main line and you can call him up and tell him what you want. Anybody ever been up late in the midnight hour and you look to your left and look to your right and you didn't find nobody but you called on Jesus and he was there to pick up your call? Anybody ever been up early in the morning? The birds woke you up and you could not go back to sleep, but you called on the name of Jesus and Jesus stepped into your situation. Can I give those people an opportunity right now to give God the glory and the honor that he never sleep nor do he slumber? He never. Thank you. He, he, he took a step back from all that he had done. Now watch this. Uh, verse 4. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Uh, but before I get to this, notice I, I, I've told y'all repeatedly that uh, everybody need a covering. I told y'all that, right? Now, and I told y'all I believe in Ecclesiastes 3. City David may not be your covering, but you need a covering. I'm going to show you the text why you need a covering. I'm going to prove to you why you need a covering. Okay? If I don't, then, 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 then pull my coattail. But verse 5. Now, no shrub had yet appeared on the earth and no plant had yet what? Sprung up. They had not sprung up. This is Adam's account. This is Adam's account of what happened. He had not seen it, but the seeds were already planted. Mm -hmm. You don't eat the fruit the same day you plant the seed. Right. But as long as you got roots in the ground, amen, just keep letting God, amen, take care of the maturation process, and after a while you're going to see some fruit. After a while you're going to eat some fruit. So don't get discouraged because you don't see it if you know you got some seeds in the ground and you connect it yeah. to the roof. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Text says, watch this. Text says, but streams, they did come up from the earth and they watered the whole surface of the ground. Verse 7. Then the Lord God formed a man from the what? Yeah. Dust. That's it right there. Mm. Dust. Yeah. Dust. Yeah. Dust. If you can't define it, you can't confine it. Dust. What does dust look like? You don't know, amen? And because you don't know, it can go anywhere and do anything. In fact, some of you all may have some dusty spots in your house. Just blow the dust and then tell me where that dust went. 
You don't know if it went this away, that away, this away, that away. And that's the same as you and I. Don't let humans put no kind of definition on you because you can go this away and this away. But after a while, you can go this away and that away. Am I talking to somebody tonight that feels like ain't no chains on me? I am walking in a new season. The yoke has been broken, amen. And so in this season, it, it's no telling what God can do in my life. In this season, it's no telling how far I can go in this life. Can I give somebody an opportunity to open up your mouth and give God? From the, from the dust. See, dirt, you can see. I, I see when stuff dirty. And I see when some of y'all dirty. And I felt some of y'all when you were dirty. I didn't know when some of y'all was dusty. Okay, watch this. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became what? A living soul. He breathed in it. It was a soul already. He breathed in it and put flesh on it so that it could walk the earth. I just told you, you're, you're a soul. You're just having a fleshly human existence. Amen? Yeah. Verse 8. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed, and the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out the ground. Amen. He placed them and he called them blessed and he put them in the garden. Amen. And understand when he put Adam in the garden, Adam was made with all knowledge of earth. A Adam lacked nothing. Because he was blessed, right? And he was good, right? And he was given an assignment. So if he's given Adam everything, after a while, Adam can't complain about not having anything. Some of us like to complain. We say we bless and highly favor. He put us in a tight situation and we complain. We say all things are work together for good. He put us in a fire and we won't out. We say that no weapon formed against us will prosper. He put us in a storm and we start crying. Adam had everything and he was placed in a garden that God had already prepared for him. Hmm? Watch this. The text says, and the trees. The trees are just like anything else. There are kinds. There are good trees and they're not so good trees. Just like there's good situations and not so good situations. There's like there's some good thoughts and some not so good thoughts. Remember we talked about last week kinds. There are kinds in every entity. Right? He said and there he put the man he had formed. He already placed him. Adam didn't have to worry about where to go. God ordered his steps. That's your shout tonight. He'll order your steps. And he'll put you in a place where he's already prepared for you. He'll put you in a place where you can be your very best. Can I give somebody an opportunity right now to give God the glory? Because what you got going on, you believe that God can order your steps and he can put you in a place in order for you to be the very best thing. Amen. Can somebody give God the glory that he can order your steps and put you in your own garden of Eden that you may come out? Yes. Amen. Amen. And, then, and then the Lord God said, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. We talked about the eye gate on Sunday, right? You got to be careful what you allow to come through your eye. Amen. It was, he looked at the wrong tree and thought it was a good tree. Uh, the text says, in the middle of the tree, in the middle of the garden, was the tree of life. And the tree of what? There's a distinction. There's a tree of life. Amen. In the middle it says, you got to understand, in the middle it says, there's, there's a tree of life. And the tree of knowledge of what? Good and evil. So if you eat from the tree of good and evil, it doesn't take a rocket science to believe that you might have gained some kind of wisdom or knowledge or understanding to have experiential knowledge. After eating from this tree, I shall know what is good and what is evil. Right? And I believe the reason God tells them don't eat from that tree because God want to teach you. Amen. God want to show you. Amen. 
God want to lead you to what's good and evil in your life. He loves you like that. But many of us don't wait for God to tell us, amen, that the stove is hot. We want to put our hands on it for ourselves. I'm talking to real people tonight, man. I'm not playing with y'all. Right? We don't want to wait for the situation to work out according to God. We want to take the situation into our own hands. We want to be like Sarah. I don't want to wait. Go ahead and sleep with Haggai. And then when she slept, when he slept with Haggai and Haggai broke and seed, then she got problems in her house. Read the text. The text says a river, verse 10, watering the garden flowed from Eden. From there it separated into the four headwinds, headwaters. The name of the first is the Pison. It winds through the entire land of Havilah, where there is what? Gold. The name of the second river is Jehan. It winds through the entire land of what? Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of the Ashur. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Verse 15. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to what? Work it. And take care of it. God will walk you through some doors, but your character and your personality got to keep the door open. I'm talking to people tonight. I know you shout about your gifts making room for you, but if your gifts may open up the door and God will walk you through that door, but if you don't have character, you're going to get kicked out of that door. Amen? Amen? He put him in what he had already deemed was good and just told him, go work it. When God bless you, make sure you love God enough to take care of it. Come on, that's not praise. That's not shout tonight. If God bless you, because I know many times we talk about the haters, the haters, the haters. If you know God has sent one or two people in your life good, make sure you take care of that relationship. Make sure you take care of that association. Make sure you, if God has blessed you with a career and opened up a door, you know you wasn't even that qualified for that job. But God gave you that job right there. Don't be up all at your desk playing on Facebook and Instagram when God gave you a job you wouldn't even honor God by working day and night and being able to leave there knowing that you have given a hard day's work that your God might be glorified in your service. And don't ask me to recommend you for no job and then go in there and make my name look bad either. Yeah. 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 I'll send you to Dr. Ireland and you go over there and you don't do nothing but play a solitary all day on your phone. He said, what? Go there and work and take care of it. If you are human, you got to be doing some work. I know some of y'all are cute, and you the cast me out, and you just, you know, every time you walk, the dog bark. But you got to do some work. You got to do some work. You got, you're not here just to look cute, no trophy. You got to do some work. Touch yourself. I got to do some work. Faith without works is dead. I got to do, I don't care how holy you are, I don't care how your pastor, how holy he, he or she may be, you got to do some work. You got to do some work. You got to take care of it. When God puts you some in position, take care of it. Amen. Amen. Now notice he says, uh, he says, and the Lord God, he commanded the man. He commanded Adam. Eve ain't even on the scene yet. He commanded Adam. God going to tell you some stuff he's not going to tell other people, but he's going to hold you accountable for what he told you. He, 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 and the Lord God commanded the man you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But, that's a, that's a conjunction, y'all. But, that means forget everything I just said and I hone into this. You must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you what? You're going to certainly die. It was not it was, 
God, when he created this all this in Genesis 1, it was to be forever. Sin introduced death. It was, man was supposed to live forever. That's why when you see Genesis later on in the chapter, you start seeing people like Noah and them living 500 and 700 years, and we dying off in 70 and 20 and 30. We were supposed to live forever. Uh -huh. but, but, but we disregarded what God said through sin, and, and, and sin introduced death. Right. Amen? Now watch this, watch this. I'm going to get y'all to a point then God said, watch this. God said, watch this. It, I told you, covering matters. Everything else, when he created, what he say? It's good. Yeah. Create this, it's good. Create this, it's good. Watch what he says in verse 18. There it is right there. Watch this, 18. The Lord God said, it's not good. Everything else was good, y'all. The Lord said, it's not good. Everything else was good, y'all. Come on now. He said, it's not. It's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Everything else God says is good, but aloneness is not good. And notice, 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 notice. Aloneness and, 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 and uh, spiritual, right? We're not talking about uh, proximity in persons. Because you can be in a crowd and still be alone. Right? Aloneness, and, and, and he said that he will never what? Leave us. Nor for sales. But it's not good for man or what? Okay. He said he will never leave us, but we leave him. church and you uh, I'm spiritual now what we say you, he, when you walk away from God that's the aloneness yeah. that's not good no. and, well, go there go there go there and when you hook up with physical people that help you walk away from God that's why he said that's why he said don't don't hit you up with somebody that's what? Unequally yoked. Because some people can come in your life and make you walk away from God. Yes. That, that's the aloneness he's talking about. Yeah. It's not good for man to be alone. So I will create for him a suitable helpmate to help him get back to me. And, and, and watch this, watch this. I'm, I gotta get y'all, cause y'all looking at me, y'all, it's too much for y'all and whatnot. And, and, and understand this, everybody is not suitable cause everybody not gonna lead you back to God. Oh, that's right. That's right. Suitable is not compatible. That's right. Hmm? Wow. Amen. I could, I could hang with y'all ex president if I wanted to. But I won't. I have the ability to. I don't have the desirability. Amen. That's the difference. Amen? Amen. And so I want to end on that right there. Covering matters. Covering it matters. Now notice, he said everything else, he said, it's good. It's good. He, we don't get to, we don't get to second chapter, verse 18, for God to finally say, Something is not good. And that not good was what? Aloneness. Aloneness. Amen? Aloneness. And aloneness, if you leave here tonight and you believe, oh, well, I got to go hook up with somebody because that's a, no, 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 no. 
talking about alone, away from God. Because watch this. If, if, if you don't let God do it, you're going to go from person to person trying to get company, thinking that that could satisfy the aloneness. And you're going to waste a whole lot of money, and you're going to end up calling me for a counseling session. It's not good. Touch yourself. It's not good for man to be alone. Come on, touch yourself again. It's not good for man to be alone. Third time, it's not good for man to be alone. I shall create for him. Help me. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God the glory and the honor. So that's what we'll pick up next week. I shall create for man. Now, if he did everything else in chapter one and you shot about, oh, he did it and it was good. Oh, he did it and it was good. Oh, he did it and it was good. Why don't you let him send all the helpers you need in life? Your picker may not be as good as his picker. Amen. Okay. Can I talk to some real people right now that know that there's been some time you tried to make some people your helpmate and then you messed up yourself? I'm not talking about you no know, kind of freaky. I'm talking about just in some just association. I, I thought them were my folk. I, I I tried to make them my helpmate, and I've come to understand that that those are not my that's not my circle. That's that's not what God has for me. He He has something better for me. He has. Some, something more dependable for me. Something more reliable. Can I talk to some real people tonight that want to give God? I will make helpers suitable for man. For that we give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's, let's begin to type on the screen the names that we need to pray for. If you were led in your spirit tonight, God was tugging at you and you feel like you need to join the city of David, just say hashtag all in. Wednesday night is a good night to join the Lord's church. Amen. Begin to type on the screen the names and the situations where you know that we should be praying for. Amen. We're still praying for Ken Stanberry and Shalane Johnson. Still praying for Barbara Spirell right now in the name of Jesus. Believing that God has all power. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Merciful God, we come before you tonight to give you glory and honor and praise, God. Thanking you. There's none like you, God. We look high, look low. Found none greater than you. Come right now, God, ask and for you to order our steps. Lead and guide us, God, to the places and spaces that we might find grace. I thank you, God, for Allowing for us to hear this word, we see it in a different light, God. We see it in a different context, God. We know now, God, that we can find rest in you, God. We know now, God, that you have created us and we were good, God. We know now, God, that things and situations have the ability to be transformed and turned. So good can turn to bad, but we shout tonight even that bad can be turned to good. We thank you on tonight, God. The bad situation that somebody in right now is about to turn for their good, God. The storm is about to turn for the good, God. The fire is about to turn for the good. The valley is about to turn for the good. So we give you glory on tonight, God. We, we magnify you on tonight. We, we lift up holy hands on tonight saying, thank you, Lord. You're worthy of the praise, God. You're worthy of the honor, God. Shift in our atmosphere, God. Move in our family dynamics right now, God. Transform a relationship from a mother to a son and a father to a daughter. God, do it right now, God, in the name. We come against every yoke right now, God. We thank you, God, for being a God that can send light for the tangible darkness and the intangible darkness in our life, God. We say thank you, Lord. And I'm asking God that as you continue to bless, God, you convict us to have a spirit of humility. We didn't come this far because we've been all that. We come this far because you are all that, God. Your love and your mercy has brought us thus far along the way, God. 
That's why we can declare like the songwriter. We have a blessed assurance, a foretaste of the glory divine. This is our story, God. This is our song praising you all the day. All the day long, God. We thank you, God. We give you glory on tonight. We thank you, God, for seven years of kingdom building. Salvation and love that you've done at the city of David. We pause right now, God, to bow before your presence and declare it was nobody but you, God. Nobody but you. And then, God, we get excited about the work that's ahead. There's another more year ahead of us, God. A year of saving souls, a year of deliverance, a year of favor, a year of breakthroughs, a year of prosperity, a year of blessings, a year of miracles, a year of healing, a year of signs and wonders. And we give you glory tonight, God. Along this journey, God, as you continue to meet all of our needs, we're going to continue to keep the main thing the main thing, and we're going to continue to believe that man and woman don't live off of bread alone, but by every word that comes out of your mouth. We honor you tonight, God. We give you glory, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. And so we give God the glory tonight for the word that has gone forth. And y'all, it's time to celebrate. It is time to celebrate. I know some of y'all know how to celebrate real good. Amen. I've seen your reels and your videos and so on this weekend. I want that same energy. Amen. Starting on Saturday and we're going to keep it on Sunday. I want that same energy. Amen. Come ready to celebrate what God has done. Amen. 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 And so we look forward to a wonderful weekend of God's saving grace and blessings and love and kindness and power going forth. Meet us on Saturday. Meet us on Sunday. And watch and believe that God will do it again. I love you much. And I pray you have a wonderful week and a blessed, blessed night.